After nearly seven months exploring the top of the Jezero Crater fan deposit, perseverance and ingenuity have reached terrain rich in carbonate minerals that might have formed on the shore of an ancient lake. Or not. On this episode of Mars Guy. One of the reasons Jezero Crater was chosen for the Mars 2020 mission is that orbital remote sensing identified terrain rich in carbonate minerals along its inner edge. Combine that with evidence that the crater once held a lake, and the case can be made that the carbonates formed along the shoreline of the lake, like happens with some lakes on Earth. A good example is Great Salt Lake in Utah in the U.S., with the right water chemistry and evaporation, carbonate precipitation can occur. Think bathtub ring. But unlike an actual bathtub ring, this is exciting because the combination of carbonate precipitation and microbial mats can lead to structures known as stromatolites, which can be preserved in the geologic record for billions of years. It's a long shot for Mars and Jezero Crater, but you can be sure that scientists will be on the lookout for anything even vaguely resembling these structures. Following Ingenuity's Flight 54, which was a checkout after it made an emergency landing on Flight 53, see episode 124, it completed two flights for a total of 674 meters that brought it to what's referred to as the margin carbonate unit. Ingenuity hooked a right turn rather than flying out over the fractured bedrock, maybe to ensure that it landed on more benign terrain, like this large sand ripple, which has been its common preference. Perseverance arrived two weeks later after wrapping up some science investigations and getting wrapped up in an auto-nav loop thanks to challenging terrain, see episode 127. It promptly repositioned in front of a large slab of bedrock to get a better look. Here's Mars Guy for scale. And note that this is a stunningly rendered NavCam 360 panorama from Simeon Schmaus. You can check out his work on GitHub, which includes links to multiple platforms to view his content. Looking west into the late afternoon sun, Perseverance got to work with its robotic arm-mounted Watson camera, looking for a good spot to grind with its abrading bit. That happened two sols later, but earlier in the day. Drilling operations started with a set of moves designed to make sure the rock doesn't break under the load of the arm or the dynamic rotary percussion action. This time when the grinding got fully underway, the drill slipped a bit, but then continued without further movement. A grind is followed by a use of the gas dust removal tool to blow away the tailings, then inspection with the Watson camera. Here's a cool 3D view rendered by Simeon Schmaus that nicely shows the ring of powder and granules produced by the abrading operation and blown out by G-Dirt. The texture of this rock, which is key to understanding its origin, shows grains that are notably angular which is inconsistent with the rounded grains typical of sediments deposited on a beach. Instead, this texture looks similar to the rocks of the Sita terrain on the floor of Jezero Crater, explored two years ago. Those rocks are rich in the volcanic mineral olivine with some minor carbonate. The rocks of the margin carbonate unit also are olivine rich, but with more carbonate. So maybe the rocks in both terrains formed from volcanic activity and were later altered by water to make carbonate, but the edge of ancient Lake Jezero was more conducive to carbonate formation. At this point, nothing in this landscape resembles stromatolites, which would be a truly monumental discovery. But there is evidence in the landscape of our robotic presence on Mars. Roughly 375 meters to the northwest is Ingenuity, parked on a sand ripple. That's certainly not beach sand, but we can pretend it is.